Hey there, my name is Julian and welcome to MemberScript 127 and this one is text input validation. Specifically, matching whatever the user enters in a text input against a list of things that you provided. So I was inspired to do this based on a forum post where somebody is trying to validate zip codes. So you want to provide a list of zip codes and then the person needs to enter in one of those in order for it to let them continue. So let me show you how that works first things first. So here, if you enter any zip code from Virginia, New York, or Utah, it, and I just chose those randomly, it is going to let you continue. So let's go ahead and do that. 10010, for example, 10010. As we can see, it's all good. I can hit submit form, no problem. Now let's go and just do like 989898. There we go. As we can see, that's not a valid zip from one of those states. And along with that, we have some other things that you can allow. You can allow patterns, so you don't need to specify every single exact zip code. As you'll see, you can enter things like, I'll, I'll show you up here, like let's say start with 989 and then have two more. You could do this, and it would work if it starts with 989 and then has two more letters. I'll show you that more in just a second. So first, just make sure this is indeed what you're trying to do, and then get on into Webflow and see how to do it. First things first, you're going to need the code for MemberScript 127. You can see it here in the demo project. You can get that from the MemberStack site. So if you're watching this video from the MemberStack site, then you should be good to go. It's in the next tab. If you're watching this from YouTube, then go to the link in the description and you will be able to get the code. So as always, best practice is add this only where you need it. Don't add it site-wide unless you need it on every single page. Then we have a couple of different attributes. So first things first, we have ms-code-require, and then we see here that I have a zip. This is just the identifier used to link all of the things up together. Yours could be X, it could be zip, it could be hello, it could be whatever you want it to be. Then we have ms-code-require-list, and then this is the list of stuff to allow. And I'm gonna get more into that in just a second after I finish the full list of attributes. Then we have ms-code-require-error. As you can see, again, the value is zip. And this is just a div block that I have here in the form where I want it to appear. Uh, so just, you know, style it however you want it. And finally, we have an optional one, ms-code-submit-button, again, with zip. What this is going to do is it's going to stop the form from being submitted. It's going to add 50% opacity and touch events none to the submit button um, until this is indeed valid. So if you don't want that, you could just drop this attribute altogether. Now on the topic of the require list. So as we can see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff and there is no limit to how many you can put in here. And my recommendation to you is to use your favorite AI assistant to generate these lists. Um, and all you need to do and tell it is that you need a comma separated list of whatever, anything that you want it to be. And the only other thing is, as we can see, there are a couple things in here. One is, as I mentioned, you can use variables. So as you can see, we have curly bracket, zero, zero, curly bracket right here. And like I said, that means that the first three need to be 100 and then two, whatever two letters come after that. So if I go over here right now and do 100, let's say 71, as we can see, it is going to work. We can make it as well, 188. It is going to work. And along with that, we can see here at the start, just as an example to show you what you can use for variables. Variables can either be a lowercase a, an uppercase a, or the number zero. And what that means is the pattern you're trying to signify. So lowercase a means it needs to be a lowercase letter. Uppercase a means it needs to be an uppercase letter. And zero means it needs to be a letter. So for example, let's say instead we made this 100 lowercase a zero, then anything like 100, let's say lowercase b, and then an eight would work. You can also do something like this and then add one after. You can use these however you want. Let me go ahead and set this back to how it was. And that is it. That is how it works. If you have any questions, let me know in the member stack 2.0 Slack in the member scripts chat channel. I'll talk to you soon and have yourself a wonderful day.